Welcome to my channel, my name's Josh, and today I'm talking about the game engine Unity and what I think the future holds in store for it. Let's get started. The first thing I want to address is what a game engine is. A lot of people seem to hear the term but don't really fully understand what it actually means. I'm just going to quickly address that and get that out of the way so everybody here knows what I'm talking about. A game engine is basically a place where game developers take their assets and populate 3D space. You make scenes and then you use those assets inside of those scenes to make something happen. So in this case, it could be two characters that are talking to each other or communicating with each other. It could be where you build your interfaces. Um, it could be loading in and out of buildings and scenes where you put your buildings, how the characters move in that world. All of that is programmed within a game engine. You make your assets, so the characters that run around in your houses, in a CCT, so something like Blender or Autodesk Maya. Um, but the game engine, its only sole purpose is where you program and where you put your shaders and your assets in order to interact with each other. So now that we understand what a game engine is, I can kind of get into the backstory and the history of what Unity used to be and how it's changed and how the pricing model, I think, is destroying the company and will ultimately lead to a lot less people using Unity. Whether that will actually make the company fail or not, I'm not really sure, um, but we can all kind of shoot darts at the wall and guess. So Unity came out in the early 2000s and originally it was only for Macintosh. Over time, people just kept begging for it on other platforms, so they started releasing it elsewhere, namely Windows, of course, which is mostly where it's used these days. What's interesting is that Unity has always had a very different approach than other game engines. Unity structurally from the very beginning was designed around the indie developer. It was not designed as a big AAA engine for big AAA companies. It wasn't designed for Naughty Dog. Big companies like Nintendo and Activision typically don't really need that anyways. They already build their own in-house engines. So the big market that was untapped for Unity, of course, was going to be indie game developers. So then we saw all these new game developers that were one man to maybe five man teams making games like Limbo and Stardew Valley and Super Meat Boy. And these people, for the most part, needed engines. It was a big untapped market. Unity saw that and they went for it and they did a really good job. They built an engine that was just easier to use than everything else. All the tools that were already in the industry, if you look at like the old Unreal Engine, if you look at the old CryEngine, were extremely hard to use. They used their own formats for even the models. You couldn't just take a model from Blender or from 3ds Max. You actually had to have a model that had a special plugin that only they had, only specific companies were given, that would allow you to export in this weird format. It was different for every company, but it was like this weird format that you had to bring all your models and assets into the engine using, and it was just super frustrating. I got into the game engine sort of in the late 2000s, so like 2009, 2010, and it was hard. Everything was just super, super hard, and when I switched and ported everything over to Unity, everything just got so much easier because it had native FBX support as well as a million other features that were just easy to use. So Unity really designed their whole market, their whole company around indie developers. It was never meant to be a AAA engine. It was really never supposed to be. That just wasn't in the game plan for Unity. But over time, we saw that shift and change. The money of the game industry has never been indie games. Indie games have been something where it's, it's a long shot. It's a dreamer. You could do it. It's possible. In a game like uh, Stardew Valley with Eric Baroni developing, it was a great example of something that was a major success. And it was a success because one guy made a game that was just really good, that can compete, at least in terms of its heart, maybe not graphically, but in terms of the heart it had, in terms of the story. And I think that that is really special in of itself. And Unity, as a game engine, needed to protect those users. They needed to build a terms of service and build an environment that would not just protect them, but help them thrive and make successful games. The way Unity worked originally when it first came out is that there was two versions. There was a free version and a paid version. The free version was very simple. You could make any game you wanted in the free version, and that game could be released onto the store with no royalties, totally royalty free. But after the game made more than $100,000, you'd have to start paying for the engine. In this case, it, it wasn't software as a service yet. You just bought it outright for $1,500. Indie game developers loved this structure because at worst, you'd only have to ever pay the game engine 
$1,500, and then you'd own it forever royalty-free. Eventually, in sort of the mid-2010s, they made a shift, and the shift was to software as a service. Now, this is the same thing that Adobe uses. It's the same thing that many companies have switched to, which is this idea that you're renting the software, and you have to perpetually just keep paying for it monthly, or else you can't keep using it. Now, this led to a lot of complications. This was kind of the first misstep of Unity. Because now instead of just buying the software outright after you made $100,000 in revenue, now you had to rent it for at least a year. So the license is free. You can't rent it for one month. You have to rent it for at least a year. And you have to rent it if your game makes more than $100,000. So at that point, it kind of became more confusing. Well, what if I have to do updates? So I, I come out with a game, it makes $200,000, okay? Now I have to rent the service. So I, I pay for, say, a year, for example. Do I have to keep paying after that to keep the game on the stores? Now, unfortunately, I was actually using Unity at the time, and I contacted their service department or their legal or whatever, and they did get back to me and say, you don't have to keep paying as long as the game's on the store, assuming you don't keep updating the game. But if you do have to add any type of updates, you still have to keep paying that yearly fee basically indefinitely. You pay it per month, but then it's a year contract, so you can't get out of the contract. And they're very, they're, they're difficult about those contracts. You could not get out of those contracts. No matter what you try, they will not let you out. They will sue you before they let you out of it. And I think for a small company, that wasn't expected from a lot of game developers. They didn't expect to eventually be forced to be in, locked into this contract. And I think, like I said, that was their first big misstep. The company really should have kept it more centered around an outright payment for indie developers to encourage them to come to their platform. Now, for a long time, this didn't really matter. Unity could push their weight around and do sort of whatever they wanted because there was no alternative. That's not true today anymore, and I'm going to get into that in a moment. But at the time, it made sense from solely a business standpoint to sort of push their weight around a little so they could make more money. The second big misstep that Unity made was hiring a man named John Riccatello. I don't know how that's pronounced. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his, his name wrong. I don't mean to be offensive. Um, but this is a guy who was, I believe, the CEO of EA, which was voted multiple times the most hated company in America. I don't know why they would have brought the CEO in, but they did. When John Riccatello was at EA, he tanked the company. Even if they were making more money, ultimately, he was the guy in charge of really negative business practices that destroyed their reputation. Again, even if the company is making money, that doesn't mean their reputation isn't destroyed. And once that happens, ultimately the company is just going to be on a downtrend from there. John Riccatello is known for being greedy. And he was so greedy that in a phone interview, he said in one of their first person shooters, he was going to charge gamers a dollar to reload your gun. Every time you want to reload your gun in the game, you have to pay a dollar. Even suggesting that, even if he was just saying it tongue in cheek, just the suggestion of it shows you how out of touch with reality this guy really is, especially with his consumer base. Gamers hate being nickel and dimed. Gamers want to buy something outright and own it forever. We've all kind of gotten sick of this software as a service system. Adobe switched years ago. They basically ruined their reputation when they switched. They're still making a ton of money because there's still a lot of professionals that need those tools. But I don't think there's anybody, any professional that's happy with having to rent Adobe software. I hate it. I don't use it anymore. I've switched to Serif and other companies. But that business move was rooted solely in trying to leech as much money from customers as possible. It wasn't about making a good product and selling it. As long as the company can hold you hostage and keep bleeding you dry, they're going to try to do it, sadly. Especially when you have guys like John Riccatello as your CEO. So John followed probably very closely in the footsteps, maybe even inspired by Adobe, because he knew people didn't have an alternative at the time. Now, at this point, we see Godot come out. Godot was an engine that came out in the late 2010s, it was built by some guys in Argentina, and it was brilliant. At first, it had a lot of issues. It was not going to compete with Unity, but it developed so fast as open source software that nobody could compete. And Unity saw the writing on the wall. They saw that we are going to be replaced by this company. So John, being the CEO that he is and being as greedy as he is, knew that the only thing they could do is milk the proverbial cow that was the industry, especially targeting indie developers. And that leads us to the next really big misstep of Unity, and that is their proposed new business model and pricing model that came out last year. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what Unity did. It made huge international news all around the world. 
And basically, they decided that they were going to charge developers for every install of the game. So for example, if I come out with a game, it's an excellent game, it gets popular, and I have the game listed for free, it's a free to play game, I would still be charged according to the way they wrote their new terms of service for every person that installs that game. And that includes people that pirate the game. They had no way to deal with piracy. It was never written in terms of service to deal with that. So if people pirate your game, you'd be charged, which is a problem if it's a free game or otherwise. And there was many cases when people would actually do the math where you would actually owe Unity more money than your game made. Now imagine you're charging people 25 cents per install and somebody has four computers that has Steam installed on it, which many people do have multiple computers. They would charge the developer a dollar for me to own that game. Now I may have paid for that game or maybe the game was free to play. They would still be charged a dollar for me to install that on four computers. Unity never addressed this. They just said in a tweet, nobody's gonna be double charged for piracy or anything like that. But they didn't give any proof. They didn't back that up. There was no way to know what they would and wouldn't charge for. And they didn't give us the information we were asking for. And people asked the big questions, but Unity wouldn't answer. They were intentionally vague and they just kind of realized very, very quickly that the backlash was so big that they weren't going to be able to get away with this. The problem is they waited so long, I think it was over a month, before they even released a letter saying that they had made a mistake and that they were going to change the policy. So here people for a month were thinking, okay, we're all doomed. And I think what it was, was the CEO of Unity thought foolishly, stupidly, that people will just forget. This will have a backlash at first and give it two or three months and just ignore people for a while. And eventually they'll just forget and people will go back to using the game engine and they, they won't worry about it. But that's not what happened. What happened is we saw people flocking in mass from Unity. I've never seen so many people I know in the game industry, the industry I work in, flee from a certain specific product. Every developer that I know that was on Unity was telling me, calling me and texting me and letting me know that they're leaving. We saw hundreds if not thousands of YouTube developers, big developers that are on YouTube saying, I'm leaving, I'm going to Godot or Unreal. It was basically an exodus from the engine. And here you have John Riccatello, the CEO, thinking, oh, we'll survive this. We'll just, people will forget and we'll just make it through. We just have to hold strong on our principles because it'll make us look weak. It'll make it look like we made the wrong decision if we shift now. Another issue was that people could game the system if you didn't like a developer, for example. And we have seen developer backlash. Look at what happened with Hogwarts Legacy. If you didn't like a developer, you could install the game, uninstall it, install it, uninstall it, let's say a hundred times using a bot, maybe a thousand times using bots. If you have servers and you have access to that, let's say you're another company that wants to bankrupt some other company. It's a fight in between developers. You could literally use big servers to just install and uninstall their game all day long, thousands and thousands of thousands of times a day until you bleed the other company dry. The entire principle of charging per install is stupid. It just doesn't make sense. It could only ever come from people who are greedy and don't understand their user base and don't understand the industry. And that's exactly what happened at Unity. Now, eventually Unity did buckle. My guess is that Unity's board of directors probably saw the backlash. They saw all the negative comments and YouTube videos coming out and they made the decision to fire John Riccatello, which of course was a good decision, but they should have gone a step further. They should have fired everybody in the executive branch that approved this. No one should have stood for this. Every single person in that executive branch made the mistake of allowing this to go through and not fighting it. Every single one of them should have been laid off or fired directly. Then they should have released a public press statement saying we've let go of the entire executive branch and we're rebuilding it from scratch. I think that would have inspired at least some positivity, letting people know, look, a mistake was made and we're fixing it. But instead what happened, only John got fired Everybody else that had to do with this, the CFO, the CTO, they're all still there. All of those people in that executive branch approved this policy change. All of them were in on it. And the CFO, from what I understand, is the one that actually brought the idea up to begin with to John. So I don't know why those people are gone. I just think it was a matter of they had to figure out who's the figurehead, who can we get rid of and blame this on? Not to say it wasn't his fault, because it was indirectly absolutely his fault. He's a terrible CEO. He's completely out of touch with reality. He doesn't care about his customers. And because of his greed alone, he should have been fired. But I don't think he was solely the one behind this business move. That's my opinion anyways, from what I've read. 
First Unity released an apology letter, basically saying we got it wrong, we're gonna fix it. Then they released a new terms of service. This is where the problems again start, another big misstep for Unity. They had the opportunity to release a new terms of service that can't be changed later. That's what everybody's begging for, that's what everybody wants. We want to know as game developers that when we start a game, especially a project that could take three or four years out, in some cases 10 years out, we want to know that the terms of service aren't going to change. We want to know that we can start a project and finish it, and the policy will be the same as when we started. And unfortunately, once again, they have failed. They've released a new terms of service that explicitly states that it can be changed at any time. Now, maybe they are going to try to go the uh, frog on the Bungston burner approach and just slowly keep changing the policy until they're back at the installment system. I'm not really sure, but I think nobody trusts the company anymore. And when you don't have trust, especially in a company like that, where it's so critical, you're going to continue to have backlash and people that are gonna jump ship and go to other platforms. Now the new pricing model that they've introduced is just another misstep. It's just another problem. So after $200,000, you still have to pay for the software as software as a service. Now they should have gotten rid of that. And part of the issue here is that Unity didn't pick a lane. You need to pick a lane. You either need to go entirely free and open source like Godot, or you need to have a royalty that covers engine manufacturing costs. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't think anybody would have had a problem with them undercutting Unreal Engine and saying it's three and a half percent or four percent as a royalty, and that's it. You don't have to pay for the software anymore. You just pay for when you're successful. I think that would have made sense. That's a good approach. Go the Unreal Engine route, but undercut them a little bit. But instead of doing that, what they did is now it's even more complicated than it ever was before. So the way it works now is that it's free up to $200,000. After $200,000 of revenue, you have to pay that yearly software as a service licensing fee that we talked about earlier. And they have several different versions and, and tiers for that. Um, but the idea is that you still have to pay to rent the software if your game's made over $200,000. Now, if the game makes over a million dollars, you are still getting charged for the installs. They didn't fully get rid of that system. So you're getting charged per install, or you can choose to get charged 2.5% royalty fee. In my opinion, this is just way too complicated. They should have just made this clearer and more simple from the beginning. They should have charged everyone or charged no one and made it free for the free version. And then after $200,000, it should have just kicked in as a 2.5% fee. I don't know why they didn't do that. It would have been clearer to understand, clearer to explain. There would have been less lawsuits, less legal, less uh, lawyers they would have had to hire to defend their terms of service. Everything would have been cheaper and easier for Unity if they just kept this simple, but they just couldn't do that. So do I think Unity will survive? Yeah, I think it will survive to an extent or another, but they're gonna see their user numbers dropping off dramatically, and that's not gonna stop. They're just gonna continue to purge users, especially as we see Godot developing so fast. Godot is to the point now where it's an easier to use engine, it uses an easier language, which is basically a version of Python, GDScript. I like C Sharp, I actually prefer C Sharp, but Godot can do both. It can do C Sharp mono natively, and it can do C++, and it can do GDScript. So there's really no reason at this point to use Unity. Let's say you're a game developer, especially an indie game developer, and you have to choose. Yeah, Unity might have a slightly better rendering graphics engine, but not to the point that anyone's gonna notice, especially if you're making 2D games. If you're making 2D games, it's basically irrelevant. It would really only matter for 3D games, which yes, there are indie developers making 3D games, but do they really need the best graphics rendering possible? No, they, they probably don't in most cases. I think in most cases, you're looking for something that's gonna look at least as good as some Zelda game like Breath of the Wild, which Godot can do now. Godot can easily look as good as basically any Nintendo game on the market, and I think that's good enough for most independent developers. Godot is totally free to use, it's totally open source. If you're a new game studio starting up, you could actually take Godot as it is right now and make your own version of it. You can legally modify it in any way you want for personal use or for commercial use. And we're gonna see small studios at least forking the engine over and just making their own versions because it's faster than building your own engine from scratch. And I think all of these approaches are gonna be vastly superior to using Unity. I just don't think that Unity has any place in the market anymore. They've abandoned their independent users. AAA studios don't need them. Who are they marketing to at this point? 
who is their primary user? I don't know who it is. I can't figure that out. And I just think over time, Unity is going to continue to see a drop off. And eventually that will affect their stock value. It hasn't yet significantly, uh, but it will over time, especially as their quarterly numbers continue to come out and both their finances and users continue to drop. Unity just this last month laid off 1800 people already. That's gonna be a huge hit for the company long-term. And we're gonna see that snowball effect into the rest of the company probably in the coming year. I think in the next several years, we're gonna see Unity become desperate and they're gonna shift their entire business model over to something simpler that makes more sense. But by then, I just think it'll be too late. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate every viewer. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions, leave it in a comment and I'll try to respond to it. Have a great day. See you on the next one.